one thing I've just got to say before I talk about anything else at all, and that is that there is no magic bullet or one weird trick to making $10,000 a month blogging. Frankly, anybody who tells you that there is is just totally full of shit. And I'm not going to be that person, I'm not that asshole who's going to sit here and tell you you can get crazy results overnight and there's like this magic solution to all of your blogging problems because that's just not true. You definitely want to know exactly who your target reader is more so than just people looking for hair tips. Are you catering to men? Are you catering to people with short hair? Are you catering to people with skin that has cool undertones? Really get clear on your target audience and get specific when you are searching for topics for them this way because you want to have a really good idea of how your blog post topics are going to tie into your audience specifically and also tie into your business goals. That is super, super important and something you definitely want to do because if you spend a lot of time blogging and your blog posts build the audience that's not a good fit for the product or service you eventually offer, you're going to have a really hard time selling that product or service. So I think I've used this example before, but I'll go ahead and use it again. If you are planning to create a advanced guitar playing course, don't spend six months writing blog posts that attract beginner guitar players or piano players or other types of people. Maximize your time and create blog posts that are going to attract those advanced guitar players. That way, when you go to launch your product or even if you launch a guitar lesson service or something like that, you have already built an audience of the perfect perfect fit for your monetization method. And another important thing, you've got to make sure you are building your email list because you don't want traffic that just comes to your site, leaves and never comes back. You want to build an audience of people who really love your content, keep coming back to it, and people you can stay in touch with via email. Now one really great way to do that is add lead magnets to your blog website and to your blog posts. So I'm going to take you over here and show you an example of what a lead magnet is. And I'll show you in this blog post that I have on my site, which is all about how to pick a highly profitable freelance writing niche. And you can see right here, I have my lead magnet advertised. It's a free guide with 10 profitable writing niches. So basically a lead magnet, if you're not familiar with it, it just means a free download you give someone in exchange for their email address. Creates a mutually beneficial situation. They get an awesome piece of content. You get a new email subscriber. It is that win-win. The second way that I make money with my blog is by offering live workshops almost every single month. These workshops are typically about 90 minutes long and in them I teach my blog readers something that I know they're interested in. Because I publish a blog post every single week, I can then go back and look at my analytics and see which blog post my readers were most interested in and which one got the most traffic. And then what I do is I announce that I'm going to teach an entire workshop on that topic and I give people a link where they can sign up. I typically charge anywhere between about $29 and $100 for people to take part in these workshops. The third way that my blog makes money is a lot like the second way because all I do for this third way is I take those workshops that I have already taught and I've recorded and I edit them into individual lessons and I turn them into an online course. I typically sell these courses for a bit more money because they have been edited down and I normally add some additional resources to them like workbooks or PDF guides to make them a more complete package. The great thing about selling these as courses is it produces completely passive income which means that after I finished editing the course and I put it on my website, I don't have to do anything else and I make money every single month from people going back and buying those courses that I've created in the past. The fourth way that my blog makes money produces the biggest amount of income every month and that is through my membership website called Startup Society. People who read my blog sign up for my mailing list and then after they're on my mailing list, I tell them about Startup Society and then twice every year I open up Startup Society to new members. Startup Society is a membership program that I host on my blog that gives people access to a whole suite of resources including all my courses and one member exclusive course that is a comprehensive course all about how to start and run a successful online business. Like I mentioned, Startup Society is currently the biggest chunk of my monthly income. At this point, we have about 300 members inside and they each pay $33 per month. When you're writing your first blog post, each paragraph can't be more than five or six lines. If it's more than five or six lines, what's gonna happen is it's gonna be too overwhelming for people. 
No one wants to read a 10 line paragraph. It's just too much. Also use the words you and I within your blog post. That way it's like a conversation. People will interact, engage with you. And then they'll leave comments. Why? Because your content's engaging. You can also ask a question at the end of your conclusion, which will help create more engagement because that'll spur more people to leave comments. And when they leave a comment, respond to them. Don't be a prick. If someone asks you a question in person, you would respond to them. Do the same with your blog. Once you got your blog post out, you of course want to link to people within your blog post to back up the main points you want to make or any other cool blogs that you think would benefit your readers. And once you figure that out, you want to start doing this on a consistent basis. Write at least one post a week, but ideally you should be blogging three times a week. Over a course of six months to a year, you'll build up a big base of readers. As you build up a base of readers, you can use a tool called subscribers.com and hellobar.com. They're free. Hellobar offers email subscriptions where someone can subscribe to your blog by just entering in their email and get notified every time you release a new blog post. And subscribers lets people know as they're browsing around on their computer in the browser that, hey, you got a new blog post and they should go back to your site. So people will start to keep coming back to your site and then from there you can monetize in a few ways. One, you can put Google AdSense. It's a quick way to make uh, money from Google in which they'll pay you every time someone clicks on one of your ads. You can also use affiliate links. There's sites out there like clickbank.com in which they'll let you promote products and services within your space. And every time you generate a sale for someone else, you'll get paid a commission. That's called affiliate marketing. That's a really simple way to start making money from your blog. The third way, and this is my favorite, why not sell your own products or services? Let's say you have a site about fashion. You can actually do, let's say, a, a box where they get mailed fashion tidbits or they get mailed fashion items once a month and you can charge them a premium for that, right? That's a quick way to make money. It's kind of like Birchbox or you can sell a guide or an ebook about like men's fashion or how to, you know, be swag on a budget. Whatever it may be, you can sell an ebook literally for five bucks, nine bucks, whatever it may be. This will all start generating you income. And if you want, you can do a mixture of everything. And as you do this, from the ads to the affiliate marketing to selling your own products, you'll notice that over time, your income will go up. Just be patient, give it a good six months to a year before you start making any decent money from your blog. Just like anything worthwhile, it takes time. Key factor number three, I actually started the darn blog. Key factor number one, I prepared my mindset for business. Do not, under any circumstances, let anyone make you feel guilty for having money on the mind and wanting to make a profit from your blog. If that's not the path for them or if that's, you know, doesn't feel right for them, just whatever. They're playing a different ball game than you're playing. Make sure that you have the mindset of a businesswoman. So A, you would like to make a profit and B, you really want to provide some sort of value in some way. So you're still contributing to the world and, you know, maybe inspiring people or enriching their day in some way, but um, you also want to make sure that the time that you invest is profitable and there is nothing wrong with that. Fear of failure. That is the number one reason I receive when I ask any of my readers why they haven't started a blog yet. I just wanna take a moment and give you a high five, okay? Let's talk about how brave you're being for putting yourself out there on a blog. Yes, you will probably run into a few meanies online. Um, I know that I certainly have, but if we're getting real here, you're probably going to run into them in real life as well because um, sometimes this beautiful world can be just a little messy. So embrace that fear and just start your blog unleash that incredible girl boss that you are because you could really make a difference okay key factor number five and this isn't a hard rule but I feel like it was a little beneficial for me um, I did have a good collection of posts before I really started promoting hardcore um, I told people about my blog when I was like kind of starting out but I really started pushing it and promoting it on all the social media platforms once I had I would say like maybe 20 or 30 posts written the idea behind this is that when people land on your blog if your content's great and you only have three posts, that's okay. Like, but the idea is that if you have 20 or 30 and people land on your blog and you're putting in a lot of time to promote on social media, they're more likely to stick around because you have 20 to 30 very good blog posts. But basically, if you are on a hosted website versus a self-hosted website. So a hosted website would be websites like Blogspot or Wix or Squarespace, like anywhere that you have your blog name, 
and then you would so like for example it'd be like by sophia lee dot blogspot dot com that is just an example of a hosted website so that means that blogspot owns that what owns my website and they could do whatever they wanted with it if they wanted to um so but more importantly is that ad agencies and brands will take you a lot more seriously if you have a self-hosted website and a lot of their application forms to get on these what, ad agencies or brands or whatever actually require that you answer the question, is your website a self-hosted website or is it a hosted website? So this is just something that if you're looking to take this seriously, it's really important. And the exact host that I, or exactly what I use for my self-hosted websites um, are Bluehost and then Big Scout. So I actually, if you are just starting out and you want something that is extremely cheap, I highly recommend Bluehost. That's what I started out with. And I have a blog post that goes step by step through exactly what I did to start my Bluehost website. Um, you can do it in like 30 minutes and I think it's like $2.95 a month. It is so cheap. My second tip for you is one that I still agree on from my previous video and that is that having a professional looking website is really important. If your website looks professional, your readers are automatically going to think that you are more credible and while they're reading your post, they're going to think that you know what you're talking about. And the easiest way to get a professional looking website is by using a theme. So I have used my same theme for the last three years and it is from 17th Avenue Designs. You can go check out my website um, and see what it looks like, but it has given me no problems, it's beautiful, and it's really easy to use. For starting a blog that earns you money, and this is honestly probably the blogging tip that has changed the absolute most since my previous video, is knowing which social media websites are worth your time and which ones are a waste of your time when starting a blog. So I'd start your blog about something that you either have experience in or something that you want to learn about. Lauren and I started our health and wellness blog that made over 10 grand a month before we started Create and Go uh, because we loved health and wellness. She was a vegan, I was a personal trainer, it was just part of our MO. Another way to think about this is what topic or subject do you bring up all the time with your friends and family? Like the one that you bring up over Thanksgiving and Christmas and during the holidays and they're like, ah, he's talking about dogs again and different dog breeds and the different subsections of dog breeds. I wish you'd shut up. When it comes to a business and blogging, you'd be surprised by how little names actually mean. Samsung could be a local music store. Avis could be a place where you bought drones on the internet. And SpaceX could be a website dedicated solely to astronaut porn. The thing that defines these businesses is not their name per se, it's what they do. So don't overthink it. You don't have to come up with some perfectly clever name to succeed as a blogger, I promise. Finally, you wanna set up your blog with the right hosting and the right platform. And by far the best place for you to get started is WordPress. Now I know there are some other options out there like Wix and Squarespace, but the problem with those is those websites are more geared to standalone stagnant websites. So something like a uh, personal portfolio or a resume. They're really not that great when it comes to getting continuous blog traffic coming in over time to your blog and having continually updated posts. They're just not optimized for that. What's gonna end up happening if you start with a Squarespace or Wix is you're gonna end up going back to WordPress anyway, so just start there. I understand that WordPress has kind of a higher learning curve for most people, but trust me when I say this, it is worth learning.